We've got a diagram here with variables A and B. We've also got the fact that the figure is not drawn to scale. Let's just read through and see what we can figure out as we go along. In the figure above, points A, B, and C, they represent the triangle ABC, and they lie on the graph y equals negative px squared plus 4, where p is a constant. Good to know, p is a constant. x and y are variables, but p is a constant. If the area of triangle ABC is 54, what is the absolute value of p? So ultimately, what we're trying to find is this constant p. Well, let's start with something that we're comfortable with, the fact that the area of the triangle, which is 1 half times base times height, the base times the height times 1 half is the area of a triangle. And in this case, 1 half times base times height is 54. Now, can we do any better than that? Can we solve for one of these variables? Well, we know that here we've got negative 6 comma a, and here we've got 6 comma a, which suggests that the base is 6 plus 6 units long, or 12. So instead of 1 half times base times height, I can say that this is 1 half times 12 times height. So now I know that the area of the triangle is 6h, which equals 54, and that h equals 9. All right, getting more information. I now know that the vertical distance of the, uh, of the triangle is 9. The height of the triangle is 9. Okay, can I do any better than that? Well, I can actually solve for this variable b. If I'm very careful, I notice that y equals negative px plus 4. Now, I don't know what p is, and I'm not going to know what p is until the very end. But I do know that since x equals 0 up here, the p is actually going to cancel out, which is very convenient for us. y equals negative p, instead of x, I'm going to put the x value of 0, times 0 squared plus 4. And since it's p times 0, p times, you know, 0 times anything is going to be 0, this whole term cancels out. And I know that when, when uh, x is equal to 0, y is going to be equal to 4. So now I know I have the point, instead of 0 comma b, I can call it 0 comma 4. Again, more information. The more information I get, the more information I can write down. And I'm making steps toward what I need to find. So now I know that the height of this triangle is 9. And I know that up here, the y coordinate is 4. So I can figure out that if this is 4 above the x-axis, and this has got to be a total of 9, I know that this has got to be 5 below the x-axis. And now I have a value of my point a. So instead of negative 6a, I call it negative 6, negative 5. And instead of here, I can call this 6, comma, negative 5. So now I've got all sorts of information. I know how large the triangle is in all these different dimensions. I know what b is. I know what a is. And now that I've got this point where neither of the terms is 0, I can plug it back into my original equation, y equals negative px plus 4. So my x coordinate is 6. My y coordinate is negative 5. Let me plug that in here and see what I end up with. So instead of y equals, I'll say negative 5 equals negative p times x. But instead of saying x, I can just say my x coordinate, which is 6 squared plus 4. And I continue to simplify from there. Negative 5 is equal to negative. I square both of these terms. 6 squared is 36. p squared is p squared. And again, add 4 at the very end. Subtract 4 from both sides. I end up with negative 9 equals negative 36p squared. Divide both sides by negative 36, and I end up with positive 1 fourth equals p squared. Take the square root, and I get that p is equal to positive or negative 1 half. And since I'm asked for the absolute value of p, I'm not asked for the value of p. I'm asked for the absolute value. I know that it's going to have to be positive. So p equals 1 half. Or if you're writing on your grid in, you could write it as 0.5.